Yeah, look at us go. Oh, I was hoping only for top half, but. <laughs> <laughs> so today uh, we wanted to share with you um, our great friend behind the camera and um, the one that takes in all of our training sessions as well as all, the, all of our adventures. Melissa didn't really think it was important to share her side um, of the story, but the rest of the Wandering Hens outvoted her. So today we share with you our videographer and the wandering hen behind the lens and some of these pictures that you will see in this week's video you'll see melissa getting caught um, by us in awkward positions as she tries to take um the incredible shots um she has been known to uh, spend a lot of energy getting the perfect shot only to realize that the sd card might not have been in or, you know, it might have been set on burst mode. So those are pretty hilarious moments. And then we have to repeat that. Another thing Melissa is best known for, I would say, would be uh, the fact that, you know, we could start a hike and five minutes later, you got to take off your coat because you're overheating. Just another episode of Melissa packing her coat. Here she goes. There she goes. As per tradition. Melissa? <laughs> yep, they're hot. Can't you tell? Yeah. So, I don't like to be cold. And that kind of brings a chuckle to us every time when, <laughs> when you uh, start uh, the hike and then we all have to stop because you're definitely uh, overheating. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm Melissa and I take um, a lot of the videos. Uh, the other girls help with videos and send them to me so I can put together videos for the wandering hens. Um, I've been married to John for 26 years. He asked before I came, he's like, so are you going to remember how long we're married for? <laughs> Cause I forgot that I said 19 years I was married for, but we actually need to correct that. We'll be married almost. We're going to celebrate our 30th anniversary. So just to clarify, 30 years I've been married for, and John and Melissa have been married how many years? 26, because then he looked at me really funny, and I'm like, is it 27? Like, <laughs> and then, no, it, it's 26. So, yeah, time flies when you're having fun. So we've been married for 27 years. We have four kids. Um, one's married, and so we have a grandbaby as well, and that is really exciting. That's something that can't be explained how exciting that is. Um, I'm a healthcare aide, and I also work admin. I like working when it works for my schedule. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Melissa took on a little bit um, more of a schedule than we had hoped. So <laughs> we're trying to get her to semi-retire. Um, and have you always taken pictures? Like, are you the one that always takes pictures in your family? Yeah. Yeah. I love to take pictures. I love, I'm not very good at doing anything with them besides putting them on my computer or something. <laughs> But it's sure fun to look back. Like when we look back on them, we just have so many laughs and well, I love it. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with that because some of the videos that you've made recently, just the endings, I mean, you <laughs> kind of forget about those. We actually did that. Like, that is hilarious. Yeah. Um, and so what made you want to video the Iron Man story? Oh, so John and I watch a lot of YouTube videos. We don't watch a lot of TV, but we watch a lot of YouTube videos. And I know when he was preparing for his Ironman and um, when I was pre preparing for some 70.3 half Ironmans that we watched other people's videos. And it was so good, especially for in the places where we were going to race, like St. George or Boise or California. It was good to see other people's experiences. There. When you guys were like, you know, we're going to do this. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. Because first of all, we're all middle age. We're not, we don't have these fancy lives that we can just, it might seem like we can just go galvan. <laughs> <laughs> but we work hard to do that. And, yeah. and we're just normal women with busy families. And yet this is important enough to set time aside for. And I want to encourage other women to do that and it doesn't need to be iron man because iron man is fairly costly yeah. you know um the race itself is but also you know all the gear for it and stuff so it doesn't need to be that but maybe somebody watching will be like hey my town is putting on a triathlon mm -hmm. and i ha i can swim in the pool ride my mountain bike and i have some runners to go running so 
you know, I want to try that. I want to see. And, and it, it just takes that to get you hooked. Yeah. And it's such a healthy, positive lifestyle and the environment is so great. It's just, I want to encourage other people to put themselves out there and do those hard things that they don't think they can do. Yeah. So no, that's exactly, I'd have to agree with that. It wasn't until like we were inspired by you guys and some other people in Fort McLeod that we did the local ones. And yeah, it is just really good for you. Yeah. Mentally. We're really grateful that you're, <laughs> you're taking the video and I'm excited that you're coming to Oceanside. That oh, was, yeah, that was so a pretty excited, exciting, yeah. uh, um, that was something exciting that I had heard today that uh, Kathleen and Melissa will be joining us and hopefully Ava will join us and Natty. Yeah, so, and Natty. Yeah. So that'll be good. Um, yeah. Tell us about your racing experience. Like, when did you start racing? Did you grow up like in this culture of racing, or what kind of culture did you grow up in? Just so we have a picture of of what it was like for you. Yeah, no, I really enjoyed sports when I was younger, but didn't really p play competitive sports at all. And then through my twenties, um, I don't know. I you know I got married and and was having kids and didn't really do a lot. I got into more exercise when um, my sister-in-law was wanting to do a race, actually. We decided to do a race together, and then John decided to also do the race, and we trained for it, and he didn't, and he far surpassed us. So that was, like, really irritating. But oh, it was the oh. worst. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really do a lot for a while, um, and then John started training. I think he did... <coughs> ultras <laughs> ultra marathons before he did triathlon i'm pretty sure okay um and he was out training for these ultra races and i was a little bit um not grumpy that he was out there doing that but maybe a little bit jealous of the time he got to spend doing that and so he's like come with me and so i was like oh okay you know i guess i could mm -hmm. right and so we got a babysitter um twice a week to go running in the coolies and yeah, it costs a lot, but it was great for our marriage. It was, it really showed me how great the running community was. Oh, I, I agree. Yes. Oh, so that was the best part. And then, yeah, um, Dr. Alan Poitras got him into the local triathlon and it was all from there. It was like, he went from sprint to half Ironman. And so we'd take the kids down to St. George, Utah and down to California to watch him race. And it was, they, they still remember that. Yeah. They still remember what a fun time it was and what a good family adventure it was. And so then one year, yeah, it's, I don't know how it happened either, but I don't know. Everybody seemed to be signing up for Boise, I think was yeah, my first no, one. Yeah, Boise, yeah. Boise 70.3. And there was like a huge crowd from Fort McLeod there and, um, yeah, because yeah, I think when they were announcing it, they're like, well, how many people from Fort McLeod are they there? They said, I think every triathlete from Fort McLeod is here. And if I can find that video, I'm going to put it here. And Melissa Herwayer from Fort McLeod, Alberta. Got a bunch of Fort McLeod folks. Every triathlete from Fort McLeod is here today. All like eight, nine, there's a bunch, seven. Okay, we're good with that. Yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> But yeah, it's just, that's how, I don't know, you just get the bug and you start and you, and then I did um, uh, 70.3 St. George as well, maybe twice, I don't remember. How did you maybe like, twice. which one did you like better? Ooh, I love St. George. Uh, I'd St. agree. St. George is just a great place to visit and to yeah. climb on the red rocks and uh. to just go exploring. I just love it. But Boise, the town I really liked, I didn't like the bike ride. <laughs> Right, the bike ride, yeah, the bike ride was a little bit And tough. I had um, issues in the swim, so I'm not a good swimmer. I panicked when I got in the water, and it was wavy, and it was cold, and there were sea dews going all around. And so um, I ended up doing breaststroke <laughs> <laughs> for the entire swim. I think I was second to last out of the water. Um, it wasn't hard to find my bike because there was, <laughs> like, maybe two bikes left on the racks. But then the beginning of the bike was so fun because I love the bike is my favorite part and I can just like hammer down and I was passing so many people. And so that was a ton of fun. I was going to ask you what your best part to train oh, for was the bike. I love the bike. I'm with, I, you. I'm with you. You know, and during COVID, I got kind of down and out about everything and not being able to. So I sold my bike. And yeah, I can't believe you sold it. I know you guys all said you're going to regret it. And I'm like, no, no, I'll never regret it. And yeah, I'm going to. Probably next year I'll get John to start looking for a bike again. And Good. yeah, when do you think you would go back to racing? Like, what kind of stopped you from racing? Oh, what stopped me from racing? I think I got out of it. Like, 
when COVID kind of kiboshed all of that and, mm. and I didn't, I don't know, I just didn't have motivation anymore. And then I got more into strength training and I was really happy doing that mm. and, and doing quite well at it. I was gaining a lot of strength and I was feeling good. And then I had um, an emergency surgery and I couldn't lift any weights for six weeks. It took the wind out of my sails, I guess. I just, and then I was working more than I probably should have. And I didn't make time to work out. And from there, I started losing my strength, motivation. And then I started eating not so well and I gained 30 pounds. And it was just like this series of events. A that, downward spiral. A downward spiral. Yeah. spiral. So what would get me back into it is um, I, wanna, I need to strengthen my lower back because I have an ankle issue that's from my lower back. And so I, that's why I'm trying to get out swimming with you guys mm -hmm. a fair amount. So if I can get my weight back down, if I can get my strength up so I'm not going to get injured when I start training, mm -hmm. then I'll start training again. Like right now, my fitness base is not there. Like I have no cardio endurance. Um, and yeah, my strength isn't there. And I know if I had signed up to do this Ironman, it would just be, <laughs> be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it would be fun because, I mean, we'd all be there. But yeah, you definitely want to prepare for oh yeah for it. it's, it's a big deal oh, it's, it is it's, <laughs> it's a big it's a big deal yeah. i feel like you can fake a half still like yeah. like and i think i did like for sure like i mean saint george i only finished within 15 minutes of the time a huge accomplishment <laughs> for you to finish that that race you also did you did a 50k ultra as well right like yeah did. i did a 50k ultra and a 100k ultra right. um again i'm not i'm not fast i <laughs> I finish and the ultra, the hundred K as well. I finished within 15, I think we had 21 hours to finish mm -hmm. and I finished in 2045. And so I'm very proud of that. I'm not ashamed of that. I just want other people to know, like, you don't have to be fast. You don't have to be amazing to try it, to right. get out there and try it. Right. And now, obviously if I did it again, I'd want to improve on my time. Absolutely. But yeah. But what made you actually like start wanting to put them in videos? watching other YouTubers and seeing where they go and what they do. So actually, John and I kind of started our own YouTube channel just because we go on many adventures. We sleep in our van and where, but we'll go to the Kootenays or wherever and just sleep in our van and it, or we'll go to Calgary and stay at the Walmart parking lot yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and sleep in our van. And, and our thing of starting Haywire Adventure Life on YouTube was like, to encourage couples to get out and yeah. do stuff together. What are your top five adventures? Oh, Becky's going to laugh at this one. My top adventure like for with girls group and stuff like that is hiking from Glacier um, from the visitor center mm -hmm. in Montana. So that's on the, on the U.S. side? Yeah, on the U.S. side. And we hiked from there into Waterton in, in Canada side in Alberta. So um, Becky's going to laugh because I was super... I ended up being really grumpy at the end <laughs> because it was raining hard and we were soaked and it took us about three hours longer and we finished in the dark and we weren't supposed to finish in the dark. And a lot of things went wrong that day. And yet it was like the greatest adventure I've been on. Like it was so cool. How many hours did it take you guys? Oh, I think we planned for, we started at six in the morning and we finished at nine at night, so like 15, 16 hours. That's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy, That's but it crazy. was so great. Like our first trip to California, um, New Zealand, way back. Oh, right. It was pretty great. Yeah. yeah. And then our Kootenai trips. Like with the girls, we go with the girls and we go as a couple. And I just love the Kootenais yeah. too. So, um, yeah, it's hard to choose five because it's like, I don't know. You love the island? I love Vancouver Island. Yeah. yeah. I want to spend like a couple months there sometime yeah. and just when we're retired, when we're retired. Oh, <laughs> and we want to do the West coast trail yeah, or Juan de Fuca or whatever. I think that's on our bucket list. That oh. would be like a good next year. Yeah. Next year idea. <laughs> we're kind of booked full this year. <laughs> 2025. <laughs> yeah. just, just another note. Um, we're grateful for Melissa's husband, John. He's the one that, um, Actually, if we need our bikes repaired, he owns a psychological bike repairs. Did I say that correctly? So because John's experience with racing um, is close to us, we drop our bikes off. Um, he fixes them. If we need wheels, we're like, hey, John, I'm looking for a set of wheels. He asks what price we need. I'm like, give him a price. If, I, if it's me, I'm like, yeah, don't tell Rob. 
it's just a standing joke. Um, if I wasn't looking for a new bike, um, John's always the one, like, I would say that I go to. Like, he's, he's, he's also always, I would say, been, like, a great supporter of all of us, even though he's not racing anymore. I just think it's pretty amazing. He comes with you and, you know, right till the end, he's there and he's cheering us on and he's giving us advice or um, – he's even like crewing us like on the ultras and yeah. stuff like that. Like he knows what we need. And I think because he's done it so many times or whatever, and he's very detail oriented. So like he anticipates the needs yeah. and he's very good at like forcing you to do, you know, you might not want the salted watermelon, but yeah. he's like, oh. eat the salted water. It was like the best thing ever. <laughs> yes. Yes. But yeah. Oh, I appreciate him so much for that. Yeah. And yeah, he's a great, he's so great at crewing and supporting and yeah. encouraging. So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. really thankful for yeah. him. So yeah. I, once again, just thanks for this time that we could have together to share our journey and share our stories and yeah. that others can know that um, we're just ordinary women and we don't live perfect lives. We have our own struggles and, yeah. and sometimes our best therapy sessions happen in the water or on our bike. You know, yeah. I've been known to ride and cry. <laughs> um, the wind dries the tears. <laughs> Yeah, it's not all uh, a bed of roses in our worlds either, but this is what we found um, as kind of like an out, I would say, yeah. for, for us. Everybody who struggles with either mental health or just family issues, which everybody does, like exercise can be like the best. Um, it can calm your brain and it can give you perspective again mm -hmm. and and make you better capable of dealing with, with the hard yeah, things in life those positive endorphins. I remember a couple yeah. weeks ago I was swimming and just in my own little world with my own little thoughts doing my workout. And I'm like, Oh shoot, there's the wall. Right. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, you totally just forget about yeah. um, And that's why, why I think it's really important for others to um, just understand that part of our journey. Yeah. You know, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm.